Okay, um, today I want to cover <clears throat> some more on the Citrix Netscaler application firewall. And the three things I want to cover, one of them is the safe object where I can hide sensitive data based on a pattern, and the other one is a zero day worm or zero day virus vulnerability strategy using the deny URL filter. So the first thing I want to do and again, I want to thank Citrix for the Netscaler VPX that let me make this lab. The first thing I want to do is log on to my Netscaler, and let's say we have some sensitive content located on a web server behind this VIP at 10.10.10.57. And I'm going to come here to the application firewall, and you'll see here I have a basic default web content profile that is the basically all of the incumbent settings when you first create a basic web application firewall rule. And again, my IP address is 10.10.10.57, so I'm going to write a very simple policy. And there are a lot of ways to do this. For the purposes of this lab, I just want to show how to create it specifically for that VIP. So I do Paul 10.10.10.57, and here using the app expert I'm going to say match anything where the destini destination IP is the same as my VIP. So here the destination IP matches the VIP and I select the incumbent or the default profile there web content. And now that this has been set up <coughs> I need to go ahead and bind it and we are basically ready to start protecting this website. Now we have cross-site scripting protection and a number of different default protections, but the, the two I want to cover today are custom ones. And also note here, we've configured a, a custom warning URL. And let's go ahead and take a look at that. And this is a URL that I just um, edited in VI on a Unix box and if we look at it real quick and this could be any warning you could send them to your security website um, so here it says you've been redirected because you violated a security policy blah 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 um, again you can, if, you're, if your enterprise has a custom security page you can send them there so if you look at the actual VIP that I'm trying to protect, you'll see some sensitive information. Obviously it's bogus, but we see patterns that match social security number, and we see a pattern that matches the phone number. And in this scenario, I want to use, in the first part, I want to use the safe object feature, and I want to block users from seeing that personally identifiable information. So I'll come here. And I'm going to select safe object and modify. And I'm not a programmer, so I just Googled regular expression social security number, and I Googled regular expression phone number. Um, and again, I'm still learning Perl. I'm still learning regular expressions. So here I have the regular expression that I downloaded, and then Citrix, um, and I have an 11 character link there. Citrix needs to pin a medal on whoever thought of this. I can basically enter in a pattern and it'll turn green if it matches. And I can test my regex expressions before I deploy them. And this will ensure that I don't block content that I don't want to block and I block what I do want to. So I'm going to go ahead and enable this. And I want to exit out, I want to log it, and then I want to make it part of the statistics on the dashboard for the Netscaler itself. And now that this is done, I'm going to click Save, and click OK, OK. And now, when I refresh this, you should see that the Social Security number is X'd out. Now there's a big push um, with a lot of the stimulus packages and everything else to digitize a lot of medical records. Now there are millions and millions of medical records and determining exactly where personally identifiable information is on each one of them is essentially impossible. 
things like the SAP firewall are going to be invaluable as those agencies and those companies and hospitals endeavor to digitize this information while at the same time meeting the regulatory framework that's set forth by HIPAA and other regulatory agencies concerning personally identifiable information. So now in addition to the SOCH, I want to go ahead and block the phone number too. So I'm going to go back to, uh, so, and, oh, hold on, I'm in the wrong place here. Oops, that's, that's coming up next. Go back to safe object, phone number, and again, I have the regex expression that I googled. Sorry, Pro programmers. A really important step. Here you see the maximum match length. If this isn't exact, you could end up blocking things that you don't want to. And there you see 13. If you come here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So these have to match exactly or you will really spend a lot of time banging your head trying to figure out why you're not blocking what you're supposed to. And if it's too large, um, you'll be wondering why you're blocking what, you're, what you don't want to block. So now that we've turned on the phone number block, and again, sorry for not whipping out the pearl and just and the regex and doing it, but here, now that I've, I've enabled that, you'll see all personally identifiable information on this particular web page and in this particular web content is now protected and X'd out, and I'm free to make this, this information more readily available, and I can feel a lot better about protecting someone's personal information. So, very good. So now, let's, let's say we have a zero-day worm that's running amok throughout your enterprise. Well, let's go back and note this. Unlike the safe object, I want to actually block this, and I want to know either if it's an infected host or a malevolent user. I want to know who's done it. I want to name names. So I'm going to come to my deny URL. And within this, what this is for is for you to put an explicit URI stem, whether it's a DLL, an executable, or a particular path that a worm or virus is looking for. You can enter that in here and ensure that your application firewall blocks it and logs it so that you know who's infected or who's attempting to get at your systems. And if you look in here, you'll see in a bunch of rules already for NIMDA, Code Red. But for us, and because this is a zero day vulnerability, we're going to have to enter in a custom URI stem. And for this example, I'm just going to type in bad URI stem. Again, this can be any, any type of uh, URI stem um, that you're looking to block. So anything that comes in with this bad URI stem, I want to block it. And here I'll put some notes. And want to make sure this is green. All right. So now I'm going to come back to my website and on the Netscaler, what I've done is shell into it with PuTTY via SSH. And within var log, once you SSH into it, you type shell, and you go into var log, and there's a file in there called nslog. And this is where the application firewall writes its logs. I don't have Kiwi readily available, but it will also write syslogs. And if you look there, you'll see, um, real quick, you'll see some of the rules that have come through. And here, hold on, I just, it's a basic Unix, Unix command and I'm going to grep for the app w. And I'm going to type in this bad URI stem and I'm immediately sent to the busted website and given the warning. While this is great for malevolent users, if you have a worm that really doesn't care, it doesn't do you a lot of good, it's important to actually log it and see it. And I forgot to tail that. Let me do that right this time. Up, grip, and swap. Now again, I mentioned this writes to syslog. So if you have an event correlator um, or something like that, then you are 
you will be able to log this data. And here you see right there the violation occurs and it immediately writes to this. If, again, if you have a dashboard with an event correlator, it'll, it'll write there, but you'll see the, um, the rule, you'll see the destination IP, you'll see the source IP, and then over on the right here, you'll see the actual payload that they attempted. So again, this is how you will block this and how you'll log it. And if you have a zero day vulnerability, you can use PuTTY as your quick dashboard to just watch the offending IPs come in and from there you can implement your support strategy. Again this is um, safe objects and deny URLs using the app firewall. Thanks a lot guys.